Hi! I love boomerangs so much that I even make small indoor ones, like this. Uh, Eric? Yeah? Can you help me pick up a drop the thing? Coming. Okay. Oh, so close. <laughs> Who would have thought that the intro would be the longest part of this? There we are. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. You can actually download the instructions for this particular one, but it's obviously very simple. Nothing fancy to it. As you can see, once you know how to throw a boomerang, <laughs> uh, there's no more challenge. So today I wanted to invent a boomerang target. So let's start by going to the problem statement. We want the target for a small boomerang like this one. And I want some kind of challenge. So my first challenge will be hitting the target, but once I know how to do that, I want some added challenge to it. So those are my problems. I want uh, this to be able to pass through something or hit something. There's two options basically that I can look at for the basic target. That's the problem number one. Uh, and the basic target can either be a target that you hit or a target that you pass through. You can see that if we hit the target, the boomerang will just fall down there. And then I'll have to go pick it up. So I want to avoid that. So I'm thinking about going with idea number two, which is some a hoop for the boomerang to pass through. So let's test it. Okay, so we're back. First prototype. Uh, a target. Like I think that the boomerang will be able to go through here. But let's go and test our first prototype, the passive boomerang target. Easiest today. Wow, what a clean desk. <laughs> first test of the uh, indoor boomerang target, the static one. Are you ready? Yes. As you see, it's a little bit too simple. It's actually very high up. That's it. It's just outside of my range. And if one of my goals is to be able to sit here and throw it, this will be a bit tricky. So we have two options. One, move it closer, move me closer, which means I have to move from my desk, which I don't want to do. So let's move it one step closer. So now we moved it, the static target. Uh, I'm gonna test it from my chair. Okay. <sighs> Attempt number one. So close. Attempt number two. Yay! Okay. Let's up the game. So we're back at the drawing table. As we saw, the uh, target worked pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, it was too easy to hit it. So we need to up the challenge and I want to make it robotic. And uh, I'm gonna use our robotic inventions for the microbit kit uh, and make a target that can move. So I'm gonna go back into the ideation phase and come up with a couple of designs uh, basic designs for how I want the, the target to look. So I want this to come up and down somehow. Zooming back in, uh, I have a, a, a couple of ideas that I was working through, but I'm going to go with, uh, with this idea. So I need to build a base that can lift up this structure uh, and I want it to uh, open at a random time, so I need to react and then throw my boomerang through it. And I want it to be open for a couple of seconds, so I can actually pass through it one, two, or three times. Well, depending how fast I can become, I can be better at it, so I'm a serial boomeranger. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's a simple game, so hopefully that works. Uh, I've now made the base, and uh, I thought it was interesting to kind of maybe jump in and talk a little bit about it. Uh, so this is a very good base, this just snap in the micro bit, but then we have, we need to add the target. And as you see here now, the target is bigger than, uh, than the base, so we need to figure something out there. So I had 
gambled on that uh, this will be a, a, a possible target that it will work even though it's slightly uh, smaller so we'll see when we do the final reveal uh, so a little bit of excitement there for all of us involved but this is the the basic process and what, what I wanted to show in this clip was how to attach a servo uh, to your structure so and allow some failures also in this case I want to see what happens so I have this movement and I want to figure out how to actuate this with a, our servo so we're going to use a servo as an actuator I want it to be slightly centered so one thing that's important here is actually to get this centered so I'll shift this inward a little bit so the servo is moving closer to where this part is and then I need to figure out the linkage okay let's check the movement Hold up, hold down. We don't want it to be able to hit the ground, and then we want it to be able to go back or fold up. So this looks pretty good. So it folds down, target, and then folds up. Looks promising. And I see this is a bit of slippage here, so I'll attach a uh, friction lock here which is basically doing this Th there we are now the only thing that's left is the code so here we have it uh, put the code in uh, and this is the first time to test it so we'll see what happens uh, the idea is that uh, turn it on and uh, then it's gonna go into its resting state so I see the servo is a bit and a bit wrong in the position so I'll just change that position slightly manually then I have when I press the A button it will start a random timer somewhere above 20 seconds you see it's blinking there and this will obviously work upside down also so I will and then it raises the target shoots that now it's time to hit your target with the uh, boomerang so I have another animation on the screen and it goes for around five seconds and then it goes down so random time open up it's time for me to try to hit the target as many times as possible and then it goes down so i think we're done so let's go on to the grand finale so we're back up here to uh, test the rig i actually had to modify it a bit we didn't catch that on film uh, but i used one of our Serpinski's to be able to lift our structure down a little bit and uh, Actually, oh Hey, uh, Eric. Eric! Yeah? I think you need to clean your desk Yeah? Wow, well, yeah. You can do that later. Okay. okay. So uh, let's commence testing of the final structure You can immediately see that there might be something we need to change so it's easier to turn on and off and especially press the number uh, the A button. Five seconds. Yay! One. Ah! Okay, one point. But that is a huge success for the first grand finale. Should we take, uh, see if I can break the record? Yeah, once more? absolutely. This is one of the improvements we can uh, challenge you with. If you have two micro bits, you can remote control and start this. Because obviously if you have a high roof, it would be really hard to, to reach. Remote trigger it. Oh, it went through. Oh, two. Ah! <laughs> two points at least. So thank you very much for today and uh, don't be afraid to try this at home.